Welcome to our review on different materials. So we've had a look at some of the more commonplace materials that you're very well aware of their names. Now we're going to have a look at some alternative materials that you may not actually consider too much in your everyday life. And the first one of these are ceramics. So some key examples of ceramic materials that you will have encountered, brick, china, porcelain and glass. All of those are ceramic materials. When we consider the properties of our ceramics, they are hard, non-metallic materials. So they are going to contain metals and non-metals, which have been combined together to form these giant ionic lattices or giant covalent structures, obviously depending on what they're made from. So a few of the key properties about our ceramics, they have high melting points, they're hard, they're stiff. Downside, they're also brittle, so they will snap quite easily. They're poor conductors of electricity and poor conductors of heat. The ceramics themselves are mostly made of oxides. And as a result of that, they're actually very unreactive. Now, if we consider how we're actually going to form these different ceramics, we start off with glass, which is where we're going to take some sand and we're going to melt it, then allow it to cool. Brick is made by heating clay to high temperatures and the china and porcelains are made by heating clay to high temperatures, coating them in a glaze and then reheating them after that. The importance of that heating process is how we actually get these structures that give us the ceramics. So when we heat sand up to melt it and then we allow it to cool, it's going to form this giant irregular structure without crystals. When we heat clay up to high temperatures, then we get these tiny crystals forming, which are then going to be joined together by glass. One of the more common questions they like to ask you about these materials is they will give you a table with some key properties of a few materials, and they're gonna ask you to select which material you should use for a given job and ask you to justify your answer or to explain why. So if we were to consider an overhead power cable, then they could give us this table here. Now, because it's overhead, we want something that's actually got quite a low density. So something like copper wouldn't be a great idea. We also need it to have a high conductivity and we'd like it to have a relatively high tensile strength. So when you've gone down that list, you're probably coming up with the idea that aluminium is probably the best bet here. So it may not be the best in terms of its tensile strength, but it has a good relative conductivity, it's got a good tensile strength and a low density. Hopefully at the end of this video, you can recall what ceramics are and their key properties. And you can look at a table of information about different materials and select the best one for a given use.